I think the big leap was the concept that you could repair things. As a physician, like any profession, you can get to that place where nothing's new anymore. You come to work every day and it's all the same. And if you throw into that mix that not many patients get better, it's a real big frustrating thing. You kind of get to that point, you're like, what am I doing? Is it time to become a real estate agent or do something else? Because I'm not really helping patients. And that's really the impetus for Regenix. We spent the time and resources 10 years ago to get into this because there had to be something better. There had to be a better way to do it. When I saw these patients who had had surgery, many of them were miserable. Many of them were worse than they were before. For more than half a century, we've been injecting steroids into patients. If you've got a sore knee, if you've got a sore shoulder, a problem in your spine, this is what you get. This is all you get. And that was the problem. Because at the end of the day, corticosteroids didn't really make anybody permanently better. And we knew they were toxic to tissues. But we kind of ignored the fact they were toxic to tissues. That was kind of like an inconvenient truth that no one would really discuss. I first learned about stem cells in 2004. There was an article published where you could regenerate a disc in a rabbit, a low back disc, basically take one that looked horrible and make it look almost new. That was amazing to me and that's what got me hooked because we saw lots of back pain patients and we didn't make their discs look new. We didn't repair anything. In fact, repair wasn't even in the lexicon. It was simply management. What happened next is I cold called a university professor who was involved in treating athletic horses. They were using stem cells. It's amazing he even you know, took my call. The next thing you know, we were involved in a study to try to port that over. And there were a lot of differences. Uh, there were differences between human tissue and horse tissue that had to be surmounted. When we started all of this, it was uh, as part of an IRB approved study. That's uh, a group of other doctors who looks at all this to try to make sure this is a safe thing to do. And that was a big question when we started this in 2005. No one had actually ever in the US injected a stem cell into an orthopedic patient at that point. We were the first ones to do that in the United States. Unlike today, where it's becoming more and more commonplace, back then uh, it was all on our shoulders. Uh, if this didn't work or if this went bad, that was all on us. So we self-funded all of this, which was an immense amount of money. Literally probably about half of all of our practice revenues for a few years went to this project. Again, very different than what you see today. There was no magic machine to buy. All of it had to be built from the ground up. All of the lab infrastructure, all of the know-how, all of the knowledge had to be built from the ground up. The first time, we ever did a knee ACL that had a little small tear in it and we placed the stem cells in the tear precisely and we got a follow-up MRI and saw it heal. And we were pretty amazed. Then we said, okay, can we do one with a bigger tear? We did one of those and it healed. And we said, okay, can we do one that has a tear that it's not torn apart? We did one of those and it healed. And then we said, can we do one that has a tear and it is partially torn apart? And we did one of those and it healed and it freaked us out because that wasn't supposed to happen. None of that was supposed to be possible. These tears were all supposed to be absolute, will only get worse with time. So where will all this end up? I think where it's gonna end up is a complete reinvention of orthopedic care. We're gonna do things differently. We're gonna treat patients earlier when disease just starts to be detected. We're going to move in a direction where we can do minimally invasive things like bring tissue together without surgery. So all of this is going to move in a direction that's gonna be much, much better for patients.